I have a mental health condition. Um, sometimes I'm okay, and sometimes I'm not okay. Um, but that's okay. You might be wondering why I've got a photograph of myself crying, but it's a good reminder to me of how far I've come from that point, which was quite a low point in my life. Um, I haven't been given a formal diagnosis, but since my early 20s, I've lived with anxiety and depression and been on many different types of antidepressants. I'm not ashamed of it, it's part of my life, and I talk openly about it in the hope that I raise awareness and help other people to feel that they're not so alone if they've got the same condition. Um, it's also not a new thing, it's been around for a long time. Winston Churchill used to actually talk about being in a depressive episode as being visited by his black dog. I call mine being in my black hole. And I've learnt how to sit in my hole and ride the waves until uh, one day I know that it will end and I'll be able to climb out again. But one thing I do know is that I'm not alone with having this. So today, one in four adults and one in six children will experience a me mental health problem in any given year. But what is mental health? The World Health Organization defines mental health as a state of well-being that enables people to cope with the stresses of life, realize their abilities, learn well and work well, and contribute to their community. But over the years, especially from COVID, um, the cost of living crisis, in increased stresses on our lives, we're all so busy. Technology, they've all contributed to the raise in the numbers of mental health conditions. So what can we do about it? Apart from prescribing antidepressants to, to everybody, are there other things that we can do to help communities, to help people in the communities with their health and well-being? So I'd like to ask you to raise your hand if you think you're not very good at art. Fifty-fifty. Got a few artists in here. What if I was to tell you that anyone can be an artist? Yes, there are those people who are naturally talented, who have a natural talent for drawing or painting, but anyone can learn. And I've seen people learn. It's just like everything else in life. If you practice something enough, then you'll get better at it, just like learning a language or learning how to play a musical instrument. This is a quote from Picasso. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. I used to think that I wasn't very good at art. And then I started painting, and I realized that I'm actually not that bad. So this is one of my paintings. And it's actually from a meditation, something else that I've learned how to do to help with my, my mental health. It's not finished could have maybe been a bit better, but I enjoyed painting it. So after teaching in high schools for 18 years, I set up the craft junction and started teaching adults and children how to draw and paint. And what I, what I really noticed was that for a lot of the people who came to my classes, adults and children, just having that one hour or two hours out of their week to come and create some art gave them a break from their life stresses, from their problems, from their thoughts. I know that when I'm painting, the, all, the, all the worries, all the thoughts go out of my head and I'm just focused in the painting that I'm doing right then. Something very interesting that I also learned whilst doing my MA in arts practice is what actually happens when people are doing that activity. And I learnt about this man. So, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and if you want to know how to pronounce his name, I can give you the secret at the end. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi was um, a Hungarian theorist who came up with the theory of flow. 
He came up with the, the word flow after he'd interviewed many people, um, athletes, artists, about their experiences of being in the zone. And they described being in, in the zone as flowing. So imagine, think back to a time when you might have been in the zone. Maybe you were doing some gardening. Maybe you were completing a jigsaw puzzle. And you might have found that you completely switched off from everything else that was going on around you. You're just focused on the thing that you're actually doing. You probably lost track of time as well and didn't realize how long you were doing that actual activity for. And then at the end, you probably had some kind of sense of achievement because you've done something productive. <coughs> well, this is what being in flow is all about. But why is it actually so beneficial? So since Mihai Csikszentmihalyi has become well known, he also wrote lots of books, and one of them is actually called The Science to Happiness. Lots of research has been done whilst people are in a state of flow, neurological research, to find out what happens in the brain. And what they found is that the brain waves, when a person is in a state of flow, are around the alpha and theta ranges, which are the ranges when you're most relaxed, most comfortable, and also most creative. But there's also these little spikes of gamma waves. The gamma waves are where the little creative ideas come from. So imagine when you're, you've probably had this, when you're just about to fall asleep and you're relaxed, and then suddenly you have an amazing idea or a solution to a problem that you've been worrying about. And it comes when you're at your relaxed state and you have a peak and a gamma wave. So those are the gamma waves, the creativity waves. They've also found that some of the most important chemicals are released when a person is in a state of flow. So serotonin, everyone knows as a happy chemical, the chemical that makes, makes you feel good, makes you feel relaxed, um, lessens anxiety. Uh, serotonin is, re is released. Dopamine, which is the motivation chemical, that's also released. And oxytocin, which is a real feel-good chemical also lowers stress and anxiety. All these chemicals are released when a person is in a state of flow. I've also learned that the New Economics Foundation brought us a report about something called the Five Ways to Wellbeing. Some people have heard about these, some people haven't. But they state that if some of these, or all of these, can be met, then a person's health and well-being can be improved. From teaching in my art classes, I've realized that when people come, they connect. They connect with other people in the room. They make new friendships. They are active because they're actively engaged in creating some artwork. They take notice. So they take notice of the moment of being just in that moment when they're creating their art. They keep learning. They're learning new techniques. They're learning new mediums. They give. They give kindness to others by encouraging them to do their artwork or praising them for doing a really nice piece of work. So I know that in my classes, people are going into a state of flow and also ticking off the five ways to well-being. So what can I do with all this knowledge that I've learned? Well, I have a dream. I have a dream, um, and I'm in the process of making that dream into a plan so that hopefully soon it will become a reality. So I've recently registered a community incorporated company called Art and Soul Cafe. And my, my real dream is to one day have a physical cafe, an art cafe that's based around well-being, where people can come and engage in creative activities in a welcoming environment that's non-judgmental, -judgment, to help with their mental health and well-being, but also reduce social isolation. 
I'd like to end by telling you about one of my customers who has been coming to my classes for five years now. And this is one of her paintings, and she's actually here today. And when I first met her, she could barely look at me. And she was obviously very anxious. And when I spoke to her, she told me that it was one of the first times that she'd actually stepped out of her house for three years to come to the class. She stayed and engaged in some art, and then she came back again and again and again. And over the years, I've watched her confidence grow and her artwork become amazing. She used to go into a flow state, and she'd be sitting painting, would be absolutely oblivious to any conversations going on around her until she finished her painting, and then she'd look up, and I'd say, well, we're ready to go now. And she couldn't believe that she'd been sitting there for two hours painting her, her work. We've become really close friends over that time. And she's so inspiring. She's inspired me, and I'm really proud of her. So that's just one of my success, success stories amongst others. They say that after every storm, there is a rainbow. But from my experience of teaching art to people, I know that engaging in creative activities, doing a bit of art, can bring little rainbows in amongst those storms that people are having. Thank you for listening.